Great CEOs know that most problems have a root cause upstream. So a friend of mine, Paul Kenny, he's a sales trainer and sales consultant, and he always comes across and hears the same problem. The CEOs that he works with always say, yeah, my salespeople, they really have a closing problem. They can't close deals. We need some training to help them to get better at closing deals. And of course, he knows that the real reasons why this sales team can't close deals is often not because they're not great at salespeople. There's a problem upstream. Maybe they are selling to the wrong people. Maybe the product's not right. Maybe they haven't got the resources that they need. There's lots of causes that result in the fact that the sales team can't close a deal. And if you're a CEO, that you know you should always look upstream for the cause or the root cause of a particular problem. I was talking to a CEO, um, a client of mine recently, and he had challenges with trust. He felt that his C-suite team didn't trust each other. And he wanted some tips and tricks to in engender trust amongst the team. You know, can we do an away day to help increase trust? Now, the challenge there being, obviously, and the questions I had were around, well, what makes you think they don't trust each other? Can you talk me through the situations as to why that might be? Because, of course, we want a shortcut to this, but often there aren't shortcuts. You really have to go upstream and understand, really, why trust isn't there in the first place. So you kind of go beyond that surface reason of, you know, people saying, well, you know, I don't work very well with them. Or, you know, you see, you hear what squabbles or what stuff doesn't get done. There's always symptoms of this stuff. Yeah. And he was right to go and lay beneath these symptoms of challenges and what not getting done to look at the trust. But there's looking beneath that trust underneath that as well. And generally, more often than not, it's an emotional reason beneath. And that can be quite a scary place to go to with your team, especially your C-suite team. Because emotions, strong emotions, are often reactions to a more tangible problem underneath. So maybe we don't feel we have the skills to do something. Maybe we feel like we're an imposter. Maybe we don't know how to do something. Maybe we're not clear on something. Maybe we can't see a vision. Maybe we, there's something about another um, executive that just triggers us based on relationships we've had before. Something that they say, which seems like quite subtle or unmeaning, triggers mistrust within me. These are all emotional symptoms of a deeper problem underneath with that executive. And so, of course, I got to the point with my CEO that I was working with, and he was obviously challenged by the fact that he had to go to deeper, more emotional challenges underneath that, which, again, is not something we expect to have to do as leaders. But if you look at the best leaders, that's exactly what they do, is they are going deeper with their team to understand, well, what's really going on here? Really, what are your motivations right here? And what was interesting is the more I spoke to the CEO, his intuition about what was going on was strong. All he needed to do was to follow his curiosity to go to that place. And so the skills to understand that and to go to that emotional place require different sets, a set of skills within you, right? You can't just answer, ask simple questions like what's really going on here. Maybe you can. If you know what that answer is or that challenge is deeply emotional underneath it, you have to allow that person to be vulnerable in front of you. We're not going to, us humans don't like to share our emotional challenges. We like to keep them in a tight box and only share them with people that we trust. And to become vulnerable and to trust that other person, there's that T word again, we need to understand that we can trust them, that they are a human being as well. And that requires within you as a CEO to be vulnerable yourself. So it's often talked a lot about in terms of the modern CEOs being vulnerable, but this is really where it comes into its own. In you being able to tell stories of your own shortcomings and how you've overcome them, that shows a deep vulnerability yourself. And in sharing those stories with the folks you work with to show how you've overcome them, helps them to open up, to be vulnerable with you. They can understand that you're a human. You've gone through the same challenges that they've gone through. You feel the same things that they feel sometimes, that you feel imposter syndrome sometimes, because, hey, we all do. And in being vulnerable to those people, you understand and you allow them to open that emotional box and share with you what's really going on. And then when you know what's really, really going on, you can solve a problem. Because unless you really do know what's going on, that problem won't get solved. You'll just be dealing with the emotional layers of that onion that sit above that, the symptoms of the problem, not the underlying problem in itself. So requiring and challenging going to the real root cause of something relies on you going to a more challenging place yourself, becoming vulnerable and helping people deal and be vulnerable themselves to understand really what's going on underneath. If this story resonates with you, I'd love to hear more about 
that from you? Have you done this yourself? Are you worried about doing this yourself? There's nothing wrong with feeling like that, of course. Um, let me know your challenges. I'd love to hear that. Either drop me a comment below here or just drop me an email. I'd love to speak to you and learn more about the challenges you're facing right now. Thanks again for your time.